Welcome to another episode of the Gap Down Backer podcast. Uh, today we have a special guest with us. Uh, we have Joel Retta with us. Uh, Coach, how you doing? Good, Coach. I'm good, man. Thanks for thank you guys for having me on here. You're welcome, Coach. And then, and Coach Derry, how you doing? Oh, I'm great, man. I'm just, it's a uh, you guys are hearing this by now. Uh, the world is probably coming to an end due to 2020 not being over yet, but. Uh, I'm great. I'm enjoying my uh, break and uh, enjoying the time off and enjoying it with my loved ones. Good, Coach. And like I said, we just got done actually having lunch in person and then had to both sprint home. Uh, <laughs> let's schedule this. Um, first, uh, first, uh, and I, I said this off screen. And actually, no, let me backtrack for a second. For those of you who don't know Coach Retta, uh, Coach Retta is the offensive coordinator at uh, Monte Vista Christian um, in Watsonville, California. Um, I want to make sure I get a good plug there. Um, before we get into that, though, Coach, I want to talk about your hat. Uh, I, I made a comment about before we came on. Uh, I like the hat. Uh, did you have that custom made? Uh, is there anywhere somebody can get that from you? Like, I mean, uh, it's a great hat. Yeah, no, this is a custom made one. This one's custom made. My uncle has a little. He he started a little screen uh, printing business, and right when he was starting, I'm like, hey, I have a project for you. And, <laughs> <laughs> he, he loved it. He loved it. Um, post, posted it on his Instagram and all that good stuff. So good. I rock. I get compliments from here and there for the people that that understand what it, the wing, what the wing tee is. Uh, I get compliments. So <laughs> no, that's fantastic, Coach. Like I said, like it's one of the first thing I noticed when you jumped on. Um, uh, my first question for you is is um, and and Coach Derry kind of made this comment when he jumped jumped on is when I think of California, I don't think wing tee. Um, and I mean, I mean, that's a bad stereotype. It is, but why do you guys run the wing tee? What, what, why do you think it gives you guys an advantage? Um, well, like you said, you said, um, you think California, you don't think wing tee. I mean, just giving that different flavor, you know, it, it keeps guys out, keeps teams off balance. They don't see it too much. Um, we just moved up a division. So, um, there's two of us in our, in our league schedule now that run the wing T. But um, as far as our area goes, I think um, a fellow coach of mine made a list. There's about, I have 95 schools. I think there's about 12 of us that run the wing. Okay. So um, everyone else is either some sort of the spread or you'll get um, a rare bunch of guys that run that triple option flex bone stuff. So, and, and that also gives them an advantage for some of the same reasons, so. Yeah. You know, uh, we just found the wing tee is what's, well, has worked for us, you know, given um, the population of uh, student athletes we get. Um, here at Monta Vista, we're not the biggest school, so we don't have the widest range of students. Um, I feel like wing tee fits the mold for whoever we get in for any given year. You know, as long as we have athletes, we'll be able to compete, put them in the, let's plug them in, put them in the best situations to succeed. And um, yeah, we'll be we'll be able to rock and roll with uh, some of those heavy hitters in our in our conference coming up. <laughs> okay, um, and and actually, I should have asked this question earlier. Where where exactly in California is Monte Vista? All right, so uh, Monte Vista is in Watsonville, California, big uh, agricultural area here, um, kind of coastside. If, uh, if I'm being honest, it's about an hour and some change south of San Francisco. Okay. Uh, along the coast. So I don't know if you're familiar with Santa Cruz, California, okay. Monterey, right. California. Smack dab in the middle of those two. Oh, that's sweet. That's, there we go. That's awesome. I've never, I've never been to California, but it looks beautiful. Yeah, the coordinator spot out there? <laughs> when do you say that? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, I mean, before we go into what we're going to talk today, rock in on balance. What are your guys? What what main series do you guys run out there at Monte Vista? Um, our base is going to be um, Buck Series. We call it Jack. I know it's different. That's just the way I've learned it uh, through my old coach. He actually coached me in high school. I had the uh, fortunate opportunity to coach with him as his old line coach too, is Rick Dukes. Everyone calls it Buck. I learned it as Jack, so I keep it as calling it Jack. But it's Buck Sweep. Um, Buck Waggle, we have Belly Down. You know, your, your typical uh, 
Okay. Your typical handful of series there. We go uh, a lot of jet and rocket though, okay. as well. We have our counters off of it. Now, running jet and rocket, do you got? Do you kind of like? Does it change year to year which one you major in? Uh, what makes you want run one more than the other? Um, I feel like we've we've steered a lot toward the jet series the past two years. I think it's because um. That's just how a uh, former colleague of mine kind of designed his off the, the offense around it as far as the counters back and stuff. And I think also he probably didn't trust the toss that much, <laughs> <laughs> uh, which well, understandable, you know, you gotta, yeah. you gotta devote a certain amount of practice time to it. And at the end of the day, just handing the ball off is going to be a lot more efficient than putting all that time into getting the pitch down. But yeah, I don't really like rocket. I mean, there's some fly teams out here that, have that fly sweep, but they'll never give the sweep. <laughs> they'll, they'll, they'll give the sweep a few times to keep you honest. I feel like for the past couple, probably two seasons, that's how we treat our rocket motion. Just uh, we'll toss it one or two times to keep them honest, but a lot of the time it's just to get that counteraction away. I mean, the one thing I have to think about rocket, I mean, you obviously get good vision for this rocket better than Jet. I mean, I think that's the one main advantage is he catches it with three or four yards behind the line of scrimmage. You know, he can kind of see where the alley player is, but but at the same time, everyone kind of sees it. You know what I mean? You can read the yeah. foot a little bit better. I think the one thing I love about Jet is unless he knows it's coming, it's impossible for a play side yeah. linebacker should they ever make the play on Jet if it yeah. hits the way it hits. You know, yeah. and you get downhill and you get a good tight end movement and you can hit it right there. I think the, the, I think, I think Jet's probably the hardest play to defend um, because if Jet hits, you, you completely stretch your team out laterally and it opens up more holes than anything I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, I, I've always been a big Jet guy. So it's pretty, but I, I like Rocket. Um, do, do you guys ever have trouble with Rocket, with teams? Being able to rally to the ball because whenever we did it, maybe because it wasn't our identity, but we always struggled with rocket. Yeah, um, we yeah we especially we get some of those more athletic athletic teams that can really get a sideline to sideline fairly quickly. Um, they they rally the ball sometimes. We really have to execute the blocking to give our guys guy the best chance on the edge. And um, I think those times where we really do to, uh, give that rocket toss is. Um, you know, when we have when we root, truly have numbers on the flank, you know that that's that's really gonna help you out is when you have those numbers. Um, otherwise, it's it's probably gonna be more efficient just uh, showing that eye candy, you know. Okay. Um, that, uh, next thing I want to do before we go to film and stuff is is you, we, you mentioned you do a lot of balance stuff. Um, why why is that a focus for your guys' offense? Yeah, so this is gonna be my first year going into offensive coordinating yeah. in the wing team. Um, I've been the offensive coordinator here for coming up on a year and having been able to call a play it. But um, this is something I wanted to add just to give myself um, a better opportunity to put the, put the kids in a better spot okay. as far as um, manipulating the defense and the numbers game. So. Um, you know, listen, you mentioned um, you might chat with Coach Roger Holmes here later uh, later on in the future. I just, I've listened to him a few times, and he's boiled it down to his handful of ways the defense can um, adjust to an unbalanced formation. I totally agree with it. And it's really the offensive way of dictating what the defense is doing. You know, um, it's, if it's from a numbers standpoint, if it's dictating – what the force players doing, um, seeing if they shift uh, game backfield numbers or numbers at the point of attack or on the flank. Like it, there's just so many possibilities around it. And the beauty of it all that I've come to see is it does not change anything for the offensive line mm -hmm. as far as assignment or anything goes. So, I mean, you get these guys who really look at data and stuff. I mean, you run 20 plays out of 10 formations. I mean, that's going to give some DCs a headache, I'd imagine. So, 
Yeah, I mean, Coach Jerry, do you want to speak that a little bit, being a DC, about the problems of unbalance that it kind of gives you? Yeah, well, I mean, well, I mean, obviously, from the from the aspect of it is, is it takes away from reps and coaching, right? Because when when you when you're trying to when you're trying to put in unbalance adjustments, I mean, you got to teach that on Monday, and then kind of teach it again on Tuesday, and then by Wednesday, hopefully, they re, they react to it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And so to the point, I mean, it's it's you, you add in multiple times that you run it and different constraint plays out of it. I mean, I mean, I remember this year we had one unbalanced team, and when they ran unbalanced, it was a hundred percent buck, nothing else. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we were able to. They they knew it. We had a check for it, but when you got uh, when you got teams that run track out of unbalanced and down out of unbalanced with rocket. You can run your whole offense out of unbalance. I mean, the the problems you create from a Monday to Thursday aspect of it is awful. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, I mean, it, it doesn't keep me up with uh, all night, but like, you know, and, and to the point being is, you know, things change. You know, I mean, I, I know if unbalanced. The first thing I always do is, if it's an extra blocker, okay, the guard is the new center. And right. Play an under front. You know what I mean? But like. Mm-hmm. At the same yeah. time, man, you know, at, at that point, you have basically a three and a one. It almost probably looks like an under front, but it's uh, uh, over front, but it's not. And, I mean, you can run trap. I mean, there's some certain elements to it. When, you, when you're when running constraint plays off of unbalance in different formations, it's, it's unbelievable that it bent. I mean, I think... That's why I'm pretty interested about this conversation to see where this goes because I can only imagine the headaches. I mean, the win team's already already. Now, it's not hard for me to defend. I've been a part of it. I understand it really well. But imagine the, an offensive defensive coordinator that's never really pushed in it, doesn't quite understand it. And you're giving him 20 formations, or 10 formations and 20 plays. Yo, you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 like that's your biggest fear. Like, you know, I, I hate teams that like run buck out of ten different formations. <laughs> you know what I mean? It changes everything. You yeah. know, so, I mean, but you know they're trying to run buck, but like they're also creating problems with their alignment. So, I'm more, I'm very excited to hear about some of your unbalanced stuff and mm-hmm. get into that. But I think it's if you can get the unbalance and get the kid bought into it. Obviously you gotta be good at your base before you go unbalance. Yeah, for sure. You know, you know if you're gonna be buck if you're gonna run buck unbalanced, you better be freaking good at running buck reg. Yeah. You know, or else unbalanced it's just gonna be none the same. But then, boy, oh boy, boy. <laughs> if you get into year two or three at a place and you can start scrambling and shifting to unbalance. Yeah. That's... That was like another thing. Is where this year when we played this unbalanced team, they got they scrambled. The mm-hmm. only time they scrambled, and the only reason why we caught it is I found the game on YouTube. They deleted all the clips off the huddle, so I was able to see in YouTube anytime they scrambled, they got into this formation. Okay, um, so we killed it two times and they stopped running it. But I mean, but if you're able to shift to it, yeah, you know what I mean, and then all of a sudden. Because you already got the guys lined up to strength, and then all of a sudden, the strength flip and it's unbalanced. The kids just don't see it. You yeah. might see it on the sidelines, but the kids don't see it, and you already just created a blank, man. So it's just, good stuff, man. Great stuff. Yeah, just creating one more thing that the 16 year old has to worry about before the ball snapped, you know? <laughs> well, I, think that's the, I think the one thing I struggled with my first year being a DC, and you just said it to a T, is you're not coordinating against the coach you're coordinating against the kids and, and training my mind to think that way has probably been my hardest transition like i said i mean defensively i'm, I'm all worried about coordinating what, what's the offensive guy going to call rather what, what are some of the things i can do to confuse the 15 year old kid that's starting his first part of the game you know you know so i think that's a to a team man i mean you know you talk about motion and influencing and shifting, you you got a 15, 16 year old DB and linebacker that are calling the checks, thinking, or like linebackers are supposed to be reading keys, but they see jet motion, rocket motion, unbalanced. You know what I mean? They're freaking out. Yeah. 
I mean, their eyes, their eyes go from here to, from yeah. here, and then you got them, you got them right where you want. Yeah, no, no I, yeah, that's, that's the, to me, I feel like that, that's the beauty of it. You know, it's mm-hmm. dense formation, but there's so much stuff going on, so, or the things that can go on once the ball snapped as well. So, yeah, just to just to bring it back, just altering those run fits. You know, if they want to shift like that, like you said making the guard the new center or whatever. In turn, that gets guys out of position. They're getting a one-tech playing a three that's not used to playing a three too much if that's, you know, how you uh, dictating a force player or or alter, um, altering that force player, changing the force player sometimes. And I don't know if you guys see it a lot. Um, we get some teams that will come out um, essentially in a uh, – 505 alignment um, and slant weak. Yeah. So it essentially turns into uh, over front. You know what I mean? Post snap. So again, these unbalanced formations can dictate if these guys are slanting or what way they're slanting. You know, it's just, it's just a matter of what we can see and catch during the game. And it's just another way to dictate what the defense is doing. You know, as a DC, I'm sure you play some of these RPO or inside zone teams. You kind of want to dictate where that option's going, right? 100%. Kind of the same kind of concept. You want to dictate what the defense is doing and dictate what they can actually defend uh, on a strong suit and then just find that weakness and attack it. Right, that, that, that's 100% right there. Because, I mean, right right away, you're making the defense play left-handed. You know? Right. I mean, and that's kind of like, I mean, obviously, that's everyone's goal. But, like, now you're going to see how they're going to adjust to it. And the problem is, is like, all right, we, I have a, che- I might not have a check, but I have an alignment to imbalance. And now, if you have constraint plays, okay, so maybe I took away rocket out of unbalance. So what do you run? I mean, you, now you have people. Now, okay, my my goal is to make you left handed to unbalance. But then if you can run down, right, or unbalance or trap, and you now now you got to defend places where you're really loose at yeah. you know because you know i think the one thing about defensive coordinators to unbalance and I'm, I'm a victim of it is i don't put I, i'm not i'm not gonna stitch it up i mean i'm not gonna be surgically stitch it up i'm gonna put a fucking band-aid on it and <laughs> you know what i mean because like i said if you most people run unbalanced what 10 percent of their offense you know so i'm gonna spend 10 percent of my practice on that so i'm gonna put a band-aid on it you know, yeah. into ble- bleeding. You know, and, and hopefully you kind of get the unbalance, and you're like, "Well, hopefully I get him to a five yard gain, and he doesn't like it that much." You know, and he's yeah, gonna yeah. go back to his base. But I mean, I think right, you hit the nail on the head. Anytime you can change a natural run fit, right, especially from a linebackers, with like you get a safety. I- I'm probably the only guy in the wing T history that knows how to defend a wing T with too high. I'm a big too high against the wind tee, um, and especially to the nub side, um, it's yeah. because it gives my safety a little bit more wiggle room. Mm. I don't like my safety sitting there in the box because he's right. not he's not comfortable playing in the box. That's why he's yeah. playing safety. A lot of people kind of stick it and roll into a five three. There's nothing wrong with it, but I'm, now I know that that guy's playing out of position. So, and I, and I take away with my front, but you go on balance. What do I have to do with my safety? Got to roll him down. Yeah, one of them has come down. Now, I, now you got him in a position where he's not comfortable, and it changes his run fits completely. Right. You know what I mean? It's a, a and it, it's it's a it's an absolute son of a gun, man. I, having my inside linebackers now have his gap is still the same, but it's moved over an entire gap. You're giving him okay. Hold on, pre snap. He's got to get the check. But then realize his gap changed too. Yeah, that that one. And, that's that's and it's so simple. Organic, inorganic visuals is it's a thing of beauty, if you ask me. <laughs> and I mean, yeah, just to bring it back full circle to what uh, Coach Nick had asked before, a lot of teams we play aren't used to seeing that stuff. So again, that ten percent of practice. Hopefully, you know, if they see it enough on film, it could turn into 20, 25% of practice. So that's that's wishful thinking on my part, but 
Well, you know, I mean, probably legit. I'm just, I, I spend a lot of time breaking down tendency probably more than any. My, my, my goal is the defensive coordinator is I'm going to know your tendencies better than you know your tendencies. Yeah, for sure. So like, you know, I'm going to study it and log it because I, I, I'm, I'm a big, we, we don't get a lot of practice time out in Ohio. So, he's you know, a film, I, he's I a film rat. Is what he's yeah, trying I can't to tell justify. You. I can't mm-hmm. justify spending and thirty minutes of a practice on unbalance when I'm only going to see it. You know, so we really spend it, hammer it maybe more on Monday. Yeah, um, yeah. I coach since we play in a win team system. You know, you can be like, "Hey guys, you know what our red and blue formation is, our mm-hmm. red formation." Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They, I said so they know it. So that helps me, right? But you, I mean, you're thinking about other places where they run to spread offense. You know, they, they, they're making up bullshit words for yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. The, cards, the cards up during practice. Yeah. It takes ten minutes. It takes ten minutes. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> purple. Okay. Right. <laughs> it, it changes everything, man. It does. So, yeah. I mean, it, to me, it's a, I'm a lot different because I know it, and my kid, the kid, run it. So they and they play both ways. There you so, go. You know what I mean? So, like, uh, it's like, Pudge, you know what you do at fullback? <laughs> My other linebacker was a wing. I mean, you know what you do at wing? You know, so, I mean, they understood it, so. But, I mean, for teams that run the spread, that don't know anything about the wing team, mm-mm-mm. and most of the people don't read guards, they read backs. <laughs> right. Which is, a, which is a fatal mistake against defending this offense that you – you just want to yeah, read backs, or, or I just yeah. Uh, I, I have a feeling we'll see some more disciplined teams that are going to read our guards um, this year. Like I said, we moved into the the higher, or for our case, it's the highest uh, division in our area. So, and they were they already had a really really good wing T team up there um, over at Aptos, Coach Randy Blankenship. So they they they're used to seeing uh, pretty fundamental wing T stuff. So. They even yeah, there's actually two wing T two other wing T teams. Um coach at uh a school in Salinas Alvarez, they also run the wing T as well. So um can I, can, before we get into film of Rocket and stuff, my next question for you is um how do you how, I mean obviously you're taking over as the offensive coordinator, you're putting all this together. How are you playing on doing the unbalance are you going to name all the four nations or are you tagging everything there's that's kind of the two different ways people mess with stuff how are you planning on ha- attacking that yeah so um my whole formation system is based off the tags okay um we have our base formations right left red blue gray black um the rest is gonna be all tags okay so i mean get my unbalanced um we, the, so just to start getting into the unbalanced stuff here, um, I actually have I have an unbalanced line, a handful of formations. Oh, and coach, if you have anything you want to share, show, you can share your screen too. Like that's. Oh, yeah, let me go ahead and let me yeah. go ahead and pull that up, and I'll pull that right up real quick. Again, quick rundown of our essentially our tag system. So, um, two back and four back, they share. They say they basically have uh, a tag each. That's essentially synonymous because uh, basically same side of the formation, opposite side of the formation. Our X will have two uh, tags, tight end has two tags, three back will have a handful of tags, and uh, that would go ahead and dictate where um, they're going. So what I did was basically gave each position a letter of the alphabet, and that if they hear one of those tags that start with that letter, they know it's indicating them to switch. So just to start very, very basic with the wing T stuff, flop, receiver over, you know, uh, basically getting that force player or uh, any player that's going to be, you know, splitting the distance between the tight end or the wing and the wide receiver or that flank player. That's uh, when, we'll go, when we go flop, we'll try to dictate that spacing there. Um, Oh, sorry, I got ahead of myself. So, you can coach. Uh, uh, so we have unbalanced line formation, so that's flopping the receiver over. We'll have uh, our double tight unbalanced set, which is probably what you guys were thinking about when we were initially talking. Two tight ends, two tight ends on the same side, 
et cetera. Then we have uh, an unbalanced backfield set. So if you want, I'll just uh, go through each one real quick. Um, have these images here. So you guys kind of see what I'm working with. So again, when it comes to the line, very simple receiver over to the tight end side. Um, that's going to be our flop. And then one that I'm probably going to use more or I've used more um, is going to be this flop tight here. Receiver over, then have them close. Creates essentially a nasty formation. I believe that's what uh, a lot of people refer to this as. Um, but yeah, that that's just uh, getting our numbers there. No, to be honest, I'll have no, <laughs> I'll have no problem writing this to um, a hash and writing all the way down the hash if there's no adjustment just to get those numbers there. And again, it's a wing T formation. Nothing changes for the offensive line. Our playbook's open at this point. Okay, coach. No, that, no that's all good. And um, I see you number everybody. I, I mean, obviously, are you still using a number system to call your plays? Um, not the traditional, uh, was it 100, 900 stuff? Yeah. Um, I'll be honest. I'm, I, I don't do that. That's not how I was taught. Okay. You know, I'm a, like I said, uh, coach Dukes, um, who I learned the system from, that, that's never how he did it. So, um, an example play call would be right flop tight 22 Jack. That's going to be our right flop tight formation, 22 buck sweep, essentially two back to the two hole. So, um, that, that's our we don't use that traditional numbering 100 900 numbering system okay. i mean you know what it is but that's not how it's taught that's not how i know the system so it's it's more formations series and then of course back to at what hole okay all right coach um, go ahead go keep yeah. going you're good cool and then so that's going to be for our line unbound stuff again it's essentially just receiver over dictating that uh force player that alley player um then we'll have our double tight unbound stuff okay this isn't really necessarily a series that um we've ran ever <laughs> but yeah. it's something that i really like just to again help, uh attribute to dictating what a defense is doing seeing how they're playing certain things so this one's not unbalanced this is top of two but it is um a double tight Okay. Um, these, bo these bottom ones here will be getting to our unbalanced stuff. So these top two essentially are the same as our unbalanced line. So I'll just skip that one over. Um, but here, okay, so we have that nasty formation with the next two tight ends outside of the wing. So this Explain is that. I, I, I'll be frank. I, we had to deal with that this year. Um, we ate it alive. But I, I, I couldn't wrap my head around what the purpose of that particular formation was. Um, do you, what, what's the main benefit of putting those two guys outside wider than the win back? Just a, a dictating what the defense is doing. See, I want to see where their force players are going to be. I want to see how they're going to play our wing back. Um, if, I want to see how they're going to play that initial tight end inside and um, see how they treat it. You know, some guys could treat it as an unbalanced um, power running formation. Some could treat it like a bunch type formation, you know? Um, yeah. So it's really trying to see what they're going to do. And again, our whole offense is at our disposal here as far as offensive line play goes. So um, really just to see how they're, how they're going to align, if they're going to shift over, if they're going to, the defense is in a slant a certain way, you know, um, if they see this as two receivers, outside of the wing back instead of two tight ends and they want to shift their defensive backfield. I mean, so we'll see how we can attack that and have that swing in our favor, you know? Um, it's just a whole different look, super inorganic look as well. I'm sure people don't see looks like that too often. Um, but that'll be my main purpose for uh, showing that look. Makes sense. So then again, we have it here with our traditional single wing on the bottom. We have that same look with our double wing. Mm -hmm. And then these two inside are just going to be um, tight ends to the same side here. So that'll be our twins tag. Twins, two tight ends on the same side. Just getting that extra guy on that strong side there. And again, um, 
<laughs> we get short motion, run belly weak if they want to bounce all their guys over to the strong side. Um, again, as, as long as our own line could run it, we could run it. <laughs> um, let's see. Yeah, that's pretty much going to be my reason behind the double tight stuff, you know, okay. just to get another muscle, another, uh, I like how simple you, you, your tags are. I mean, it's, I mean, it's kind of just really, I mean, you can't beat the simplicity of it. I mean, uh, your right, left, obviously, you know what I mean? Tell you back sets obviously and then you have red i'm assuming right means the tight end goes to the right uh yeah. etc so i mean that's how how simple it, it is the tag it man mm -hmm. i think a lot of people get a little too cute with their name but this is yeah you know, and it allows you to be super multiple yeah i agree 100 like yeah uh, my coach is, is also going to be the dc this year and that when uh, you go up I love the uh, gray. I think it was gray flop. Oh yeah, yeah. That's our backfield. We'll get. We we we'll yeah. see more. You know, actually, I love that man. Yeah, our backfield uh, unbalanced stuff. So, um, I just getting all our backs on one side. This actually, uh, a couple years back, I was at Gilroy High School. Um, we were playing in the our section finals. It essentially, solidified the game for us and. Or uh, Rick Dukes, he uh, essentially put it in on a during that drive, called a timeout, told our running back, "Hey, go to the other side. We're running belly." The running back took it for sixty yards of the house to win our championship. So <laughs> ever since then, I'm like that. That like at the time, that almost blew my mind. So I'm like, that's crazy. Just flip the guy over. You have an extra guy there. It happened so quick. The defense couldn't adjust. We just simply had him out, man. Um, but yeah, our, our black and grays are a uh, single wing away from the tight end. So then we, again, we have our, our, um, tags there telling our guys to go to the opposite side of the backfield helps get our numbers there. Uh, we have that out of, um, right, left, gray, black, and even blue and red having those two wings going out to the opposite side there. So um, that's that. That's how I like uh, to basically do in the power running game. You know our traditional wing T stuff. Then this last two, again, just stuff I was showing. Um, you know, basically talking to my head coach of the DC now, and you know sometimes you get ahead of yourself and you <laughs> you're drawing stuff on the board. But I did. Uh, I actually saw one team, I, and I can't even tell you who it was, if I'm being honest, or where they're from. It was one of those YouTube rabbit hole days where you're just watching, you know, <laughs> B T stuff and you just fall down the rabbit hole. They went quads on one side, ran buck sweep, and it just looked phenomenal. <laughs> like, for some reason, like, I don't know why, but I wrote it down and the head coach was here like, well, you can do this, you can do this, but at the end of the day, it's like, it's a numbers game, and, you know, might as well have it in your back pocket. I mean, Depending on what kind of season we have, I might not even have this formation in. Yeah. But if you have any back pocket to use, why not jot it down, you know? So, again, something like this with the, the, with the unbalanced flanks here, um, you go rocket toss, buck sweep. Um, <laughs> if you want, if you're, you have a good player at the wing, you could do a counter back, like a Sally or something. So, it's, it was just cool um, you seeing this unbalanced flank. I ain't that other dimension of unbalance, you know, then you have put the defense in a bind to having to defend and do what they do against that look. Yeah. It's essentially the bottom one's essentially empty under center. I don't know how often people see empty under center nowadays, but. Um, we actually do it a decent amount, the empty under center. I mean, we didn't do as much this year. We did more the year before, but I love empty under center, especially when you're talking jets, jet or rocket. I think, right. I think, I think you had caused a serious problem. When I was at Elgin, we ran the crap out of MD Rocket. Yeah, nice. Yeah, we um, the, one of the coolest plays I, I saw, um, empty set. Um, they ran a draw with the quarterback. It was quarterback trap with the jet motion. It was great. <laughs> it was great. Um, do you kind of want to move to some film on Rocket Coach, and so we can kind of look to see that before we wrap up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me go ahead and do that. So that's just to wrap it up. Again, that's our 
our unbalanced stuff. We have our unbalanced the line, unbalanced flank, which is essentially new for me. And then our unbalanced backfield. And again, it's about numbers for us, getting those numbers there. How often do you um, have to uh, practice? I mean, you, you've got a lot of formations. Do you, are there some stuff that you do in the off season to kind of help rep um, to make sure they have the formations down? whether they're just not thinking about it, they line up, or what, what are some of the things that you do to help with that? Yeah, so essentially in my first year being an OC, our off season is right now <laughs> during this pandemic situation where yeah. stuff's here for us out here in California. Um, but I'm doing a lot of it virtually. So I literally, these charts I had up here, I'll send these to the backs. Gotcha. These understand what they mean if you're a four back. Understand what they mean if you're at two back. If you're at two back, your tag is always going to start with an O. If you're at four back, your tag is always going to start with an S. You know, so that that's essentially where I'm going to get to it um, as far as introducing it and um, installing it. Once we're on the field, we'll have a um, what we do is we call it huddle breaks. You know, so it's crucial. It's critical for the O line in the system because um, that alignment's critical. Having them back behind the center. We want to have those angles, you know, to help with our timing, with our pullers hitting the, our backs hitting the holes, all that good stuff. But while we do those huddle breaks, we'll have, uh, I'll have my online coach uh, looking at the splits, looking at the alignment, looking at the how fast you're getting to the ball, et cetera. But I'll be calling different um, formations. So it's essentially breaking the huddle, uh, hustling the line, you know, keeping that fast tempo, getting in the line, getting back. So that our uh, practice session when working that would be our huddle break period, which will essentially probably start every practice with that huddle break period. Hey, coach. Um, I got a train of thought. I just lost it. Um, <laughs> kind of, I mean, at, before we start film, what are your kind of rules for Rocket? Do you just teach it, everybody is pretty much zone? Kind of like, how, how, do you, yeah. how do you teach Rocket? So, um, we have terminology for our backside in our base plays. This term, term is uh, backside area blocking. So backside area for our backside linemen, um, that means cut off or climb. So if there's someone in your play side gap, you want to cut them off. If there's no one in that gap, you want to climb to the next level, whether it's the backers or if there's still no one there, the secondary. Um, I tell the whole line except the play side tackle you have backside area blocking, essentially. You're gonna cut off or climb, cut off the guy in the gap to immediately the play side of you, or you're climbing to the backside, or you're, sorry, you're climbing to the next level. Um, where it gets um, altered a little bit would be our play side tackle. Um, we don't necessarily tell him to pull. I'll tell him to rocket step, because when we tell him to pull, he's, our guy would literally just run to the sideline. Uh, I tell him to rocket step, basically, essentially telling him to take one big, wide step, opening up, and you're running, and I want you to um, get on that first guy outside. So just get in the way, block him, get your hands on him by any means. All right, and then um, sometimes if we go in one of those unbalanced formations there, like our flop tight, so our receiver's down tight to the wing, we might even have them crack down. So the sense of our tackles lean the way for the rocket guy. Just because um, the way our alignment is, he's the only one that will really get out there in space and be able to actually help. Our guard pulling, there's, he's not going to get there. He won't really make a difference. I'd rather him try to cut off a linebacker. Cool. So um, this is uh, from my first year, actually, uh, coaching O-line at Gilroy High School. Um, this is our essentially, I think it was our first game, actually. Our line did not do a good job <laughs> at reach blocking at all. But here's, I put this in here because it's essentially the basic concept of our rocket toss. And that's just a new rocket to our two back, our, uh, our back out of the backfield. Okay, our traditional, traditional rocket motion you'll see is from the, the uh, wing back. That's just straight from the backfield there. Again, just getting the perimeter. Um, the first time I actually uh, was introduced to Rocket was, I think it was 2012, that Coach uh, Lorero from Escalon High School was having a wing tee camp there. 
was my I was coaching JV at my alma mater, and um, they brought in there. It's like, hey, you want to give it to our fast guy? Tom will run the first down marker if he gets the edge. Good for us, you know. So essentially, this was like the primitive of our rocket stuff right here. Just toss it to our fastest guy, hoping he gets the edge. And um, it works out. <laughs> Boom, receiver even cracked down there, which I don't even think you do anymore. But yeah, give it to your fast guy on the rocket. Let him get the edge. Um, we'll have a few more rocket examples here, and then we'll get into our counters that we do. Okay. So again, I think this will be another uh, rocket toss um, to the to the back out of the backfield. Yes, we have our guys on the perimeter. See, those are some of the guys that this was actually a solid defense that was able to swarm to the ball, especially their alley players. Okay, and then uh, right tackle here. Can you see my mouse? Yes. Yeah, okay, so this is going to be that rocket step. I didn't even want him to get a little flatter down the line more, but this is going to be that rocket step. You know, that rocket step's going to make sure he's getting here. So just get in his way, you know, that guy had, had the high motor. We were worried about the, that deep, that was a solid defensive line we played that week. Um, but yeah, just get in the way. As long as you're in front of him, you're between him and the ball carrier, you're doing your job. Um, this here is single back. We rocket to the fullback that we've done. And you'll see, um, this is our first playoff game here. You'll see how it, it sets something up for us later in the playoffs. Let's rock it to the fullback there. See our play side tackle actually gets outside of that wingback's block. That, that, play, that play side tackle there at the bottom. So better rocket step. Kind of crossed over, but still that path staying wide. That's what we're looking for. Okay. Ball carry did a good job setting up his blocks. So that's probably one of the best running backs we've had in the uh, walk through those schools in a while. Here we are again. That's the second, uh, that's it. This is our second playoff game. Okay, so again, rocket toss, getting wide, a solid block. And then that's gonna set up uh, a nice little playoff for that. Well, it'll be the next one. So that's rocket to our fullback. We do that out of that uh, unbalanced flank there. And then uh, you can probably guess what's coming off of that. <laughs> and it's gonna be here. Nice, rocket pass, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. So that, that essentially put the nail in the coffin. Well, not the nail in the coffin, but it put us up fairly comfortably. Um, that play, um, Rick Dukes, our offensive coordinator, actually took it to um, the school he's at now, uh, Aptos, up in our division. And they uh, ran the same play to win a championship, I think two years after that. <laughs> but um, when I saw it live, I was like, I know what's coming. I know what's coming. End of the game, got it, they scored. It was good stuff. All right, um, so now there's gonna be some counter stuff using some of that rocket motion. So here we're gonna have rocket trap to the fullback. So that's rocket out of the backfield. So we have him going horizontal, then we're hitting trap inside. Okay. Getting a good wall there. That's very well <laughs> run, coach. Oh, I like that. Yeah, so um, trap, we'll have counter tray here. Which is uh, which has been a pretty solid staple in our offense. Probably the three years we've been three three years we've been running three four years we've been running it. Uh, counter trade for us is backside guard and tackle pulling, guard kicking out, tackle leading up. I know a lot of people have a bunch of different names for it. <laughs> you know, play this through. There's our rocket counter trade underneath. And that, I think he was a sophomore there. Didn't have the best vision, unfortunately, but um, that's just our uh, a counter tray off of that. 
Again, you can see how it holds that uh, that whole half of the defense there, keeping them honest. And then um, adjustment. I think we ran this because we noticed that that defender there, number five. I don't know. He was doing. They were playing this man. Um, <laughs> but there's our counter chair. Tackle gets in space. Our ball carrier just wanted to neglect all this green out here for some reason, but. <laughs> Here we have a rocket counter tray again against the same team. That's more of a traditional rocket motion from the wing back there. We're able to get inside. Um, our counter tray, essentially everyone's down blocking. Our pullers are pulling. Yep. You know, so that's a solid, um, solid counter off of Rocket as well. I don't know how many more. Okay, good. This one here is probably my favorite counter off of Rocket. Um, tackle trap. Mm. I I especially love tackle trap. It's again um, most of the time the way it's set up. We had two linemen on their inside backer, which I just, as often as an offensive line coach, especially former offensive line coach, you just love seeing your guys on linebackers. Um, I'm going to play it slow mo as well here. So to me, um, our right tackle pulling, kicking the first guy past the center. Underneath handoff. I like that. Coach. Yeah, guys on the backers. I think we take this one in. But I mean, that's I like that. Now, what, what is your rule for who you're trapping there? It's always me. The first guy past the center. Okay. First guy past the center. <clears throat> so that's the thing. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it's tough because if our tackle doesn't take the right path, I think there's one of the one of these here where he doesn't. He ends up not blocking the right person. Um, and that can really change it from being a huge gain to a super minimal, minimal gain. Yeah. So we have, uh, again, a rocket, tackle trap, boom, good hitter, or just our backside tackle. Just, we had this, we had to get him out of this habit of watching the play. <laughs> and you can imagine how, how, how upset we were here. Cause he just wanted to watch the play for some reason. <laughs> he ended up making the tackle for the other team. But that that's our tackle trap. Um, then we have two more solid clips here on that. I think this is one where he missed because of the, a bad path. Yeah. Boom. So um, our right tackle's pulling. Okay, we leave him unblocked. So this would have hit a little tighter. His pull should have been a little more downhill to be able to get him. I said he gets the next guy out um, and essentially what should have been a huge play was only a two yard game. You have two guys on the inside backer, which is perfect. This team here, um, they run a funky defense called a, literally it's forces everything to this guy. So when we play this team. Oh, I, I, I got, I got some stuff for you on that coach. We, we play, hey. we play some, somebody with something very similar. Um, and yeah, I, I, yeah, we got some stuff for you. <laughs> yeah, I love, love, love to see that later. <laughs> yeah, so this is our flex side. It goes either side, which will widen this guy out. Any, anyways, for, for, funnels everything into this guy. Um, we were able to get two guys on him on this play, which is what we wanted, but our tackle's path was just not tight enough. And he ended up blocking the wrong person. But And then we, I think the next one's going to be a very successful one. Yeah, this one's going to be a super successful one um, where you'll see the guys on the... Honestly, do you guys watch it? <laughs> they, our guys did a great job on this one. And then he was just off to the races there. Um, but again, again, using that rocket to keep these guys honest, allowing our linemen to get to the backer there and allowing this play to pop.
So we, we essentially block him into the safety. <laughs> so that's, that was great. And then that just, that team was very athletic. They, very good team. Uh, they ended up catching that guy actually. <laughs> but um, yeah, tackle trap off of Rockets. And uh, this is toward the end of the season. Um, we're able to get a little tricky here. This is uh, essentially tackle trap, and we ran option. So this guy is going to be – he's a very athletic. He's a load, hard to tackle. He was a very smart guy, um, essentially both quarterbacks, um, which has allowed us to do – special stuff like this. So this is tackle trap and then this turned it into an option with that rocket motion. And then I think that might be it. Yeah, that's it. Those other two were no bueno. But for, um, again, rocket motion, you probably saw, I showed a handful of actual rocket tosses. Yeah. A lot of it's uh, to set up that counter game because that counter game can hit big when it hits. As long as we can execute. <laughs> oh, oh uh, before we get, Derek, do you have any last questions before we start wrapping up? No, I, I thought it was really creative how well you change your motion guy out of that formation. I, in fact, you're probably the first person I've ever seen from rocket. Um, the way that you did it. I, I've seen some uh, people get into your right and left and motion the two or four back and then do like a quick pitch to the fullback. Oh, uh, I see. But I've never seen an actual rocket motion out of the dive back position. That was phenomenal. Yeah, so those, those were Coach Dukes. He, uh, he's probably one of, the, <laughs> one of the better masterminds out here in this area when it comes to the wings. He got very fortunate to have learned the offense from him you know and the, again those different tweaks uh like you point out there having those other guys do that rocket motion that's something that taking away and using for sure 100 percent right you can do so much out of that too i mean that kind of tray off of that you know what i mean with just like could you see that that's kind of one of those slower develop emotion too so yeah. if the play's working i mean you already know those inside linebackers are like, oh here we go again yeah, yeah, for sure. And if they haven't seen it, and you throw the motion out there, I mean, you know, again, there's some play sometimes like that tackle trap. There's sometimes we even run rocket. We'd run the rocket motion with tackle trap and it hit just because it's something new. It's eye candy, and they're like, oh, I gotta get my butt out there, you know? Yeah, so, well, it's just like, well, I mean, if we're the history of you running rocket, it's still gonna right. be in the back of their minds, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, it's like, ah, man, I got burned in film last year. <laughs> yeah. so, How am I going to get roasted in film this year? <laughs> well, tackle crap. Oh, crap. Well, Coach Retta, I, I do appreciate you coming on, talking a little ball with us. Um, just uh, hang tight as I wrap this up. And I, I do want to show you that stuff real quick before you go um, off yeah, off air, sure, obviously. Yeah. Um, but uh, – Again, Coach uh, Retta's uh, contact information will be in the bio for anybody that wants to reach out to him, talk more wing tea with him. I know he'll gladly share ideas and ask you a bunch of questions. Uh, so please reach out to him. He'll, his Twitter handle will be in the bio. Um, it's probably the easiest way to get hold, hold of him. Um, the, other, the other thing is, uh, like I said, um, depending on how some of this stuff works out, in theory we should have had Coach Jim McKee on the episode before this. Um, and then after this, I think we'll have like one or two more guests. We'll finish up our belly series, um, and then probably move on. I'll, I'll actually, I'll probably put out a poll that'll probably have been done by the time this airs on what we move on to next. Whether it be down, buck, trap, something like that. So, um, but again, thank you for listening to this episode of the Gap Down Backer Podcast, and we will be back next week.